Welcome back. Problem 12-31. This problem is taken from chapter 12 that is deflection of beams and shafts and the book name is Mechanics of Material by R.C. Hibler. So statement is the shaft is supported at A by a general bearing that exert only vertical reaction on the shaft and at C by a thrust bearing that exert horizontal and vertical reactions on the shaft. Determine the equation of elastic curve EI is constant. So you can see this is the shaft AB that is supported by a general bearing at A that only exert a vertical force clear and there is a smooth thrust, uh, there is thrust bearing that exert horizontal as well as vertical forces. So P load is applied at point B so you have to determine the equation of elastic curve which means that you have to find the equation of deflection for this beam. So let's start with the solution. We will solve this equation by using discontinuity function which includes singularity function and Macaulay functions and you know them very well. So let's start the solution. So if you remove this thrust, uh, thrust bearing so you will be having a reaction force that will be acting upward let this force is RC and you will be having a reaction force as well which is equal to this is RCY and this will be equal to RCX and if you remove this smooth uh, uh, remove this general bearing so you will be having a reaction force which will be acting downward so we will find these forces by using equation of equilibrium so sum of first equation of equilibrium is sum of all forces along x direction must be equal to zero and force in this direction is taken as positive so you can see only one horizontal force which is rc act is acting there is no other force so it means that rcx will be equal to zero so this is one reaction force now we'll find another reaction force by using equation of equilibrium that sum of all moments about point A is equal to zero and taking the counterclockwise moment as positive. So about this point A one moment is RCY into perpendicular distance is this one which is equal to A and this is producing counterclockwise moment this will be positive the second moment that is produced by this force p and perpendicular distance is a plus b and this is producing clockwise moment so it will be negative and their sum must be equal to zero so i will write r c y into a minus p into a plus b is equal to zero so it means that we have RCY will be equal to P into A plus B divided by A. This is the value of RCY. Okay. Now we will find this RA. So we will use this equation of equilibrium that sum of all forces along Y direction must be equal to zero and force upward taken is positive. So RA is downward, so it will be minus RA plus RCY is upward. So plus RCY is P into A plus B divided by A minus this P is downward. Their sum must be equal to zero. So we will get minus RA plus P into A divided by A when you expand it plus p into b divided by a minus p is equal to 0. So minus r a plus p plus p b over a minus p is equal to 0. So this p and this p will cancel each other. So we will get r a will be equal to p b over a. Now you have all these three reaction forces clear. So we will move toward finding the equation of elastic curve. So we know that EI into D square V over DX square is equal to moment. So here we will use 
discontinuity function in which we will find a single equation for moment by using by using discontinuity function a single moment moment function will be generated by using discontinuity function so we will use singularity function because singularity function only covers the uh, point load and uh, movements so this this is the table that is available in chapter number 12 deflection of beam and shaft so these are the loading first column show loading the second column shows loading function third is shear and the fourth one is movement function since we are interested in movement and our this case shows you only the concentrated force at these points so what will be the case we will use so we will use the singularity function and the case will be this second one so i will copy this i have already this one and paste it over here so we will take the help of this second row of the table and we will calculate the moment function so starting from here you can see that p load is applied at this this x start from here clear and p x at a distance of a so in this case the first load is r a which is equal to p b over a and r c y is p into a plus b divided by a so we'll start from the left hand side and we will move towards the right hand side and at the right hand side at the end you will neglect this load okay so starting from this point a so you can see load is pb divided by a and since here this p is started from this point this p is starting from this point and it is downward so its movement function is given as p first we will write the moment function so moment function is p p into macaulay's bracket x minus a power 1 for this load you will also write as you can see this load p is upward and this force is downward so it will be minus p now this force this force rcy which is p into a plus b is upward so i will write another plus p into x minus a power 1 okay here this p is equal to we will write it as r a and this will be equal to r c y so r a is p b divided by a and here you can see a is equal to 0 in in this case a is on x uh, this r a is on x so a is equal to 0 so i will write x minus 0 power 1 plus r c y which is equal to p into a plus b divided by a into x minus now you can see here this this load is acting at this point and x start from here and a is this one so it will be x minus a whole power one okay so this is your required moment equation okay and this is minus pv now you will put this m in here so you will get ei into d square v over dx square is equal to minus pb over a x clear power 1 plus p into a plus b divided by a into x minus a power 1 so if you further simplify it you will get ei into d square v over dx square is equal to minus p p 
a into x plus p into a plus b divided by a into I call a bracket x minus a okay so this is your equation now integrate it integrate it we will get e i into d v over d x is equal to minus p b x square over 2 a plus this constant p into a plus b over 2 a into x minus a power 2 divided by 2 divided by a divided by 2 and we have left with this a so this is 2 a and there will be a constant of integration c1 so let this is your equation number one again integrate integrate equation one we will get e i into v which is deflection is equal to minus p b x cube over six a plus p into a plus b divided by 2a into x minus a power 3 divided by 3 so that will be 6a plus c1x plus c2 so this is your equation number two. Now C one and C two are unknown. C one and C two are constant of integration. And they can be found by using boundary condition. So we will write boundary conditions. What are the boundary condition? So let this let me discuss this as well so first boundary condition is that at x is equal to 0 we have deflection is equal to 0 so let me show over here you can see that here x is equal to 0 and there is a journal bearing so here deflection will be equal to 0 so we will use put in equation number put in equation 2 because equation 2 is for deflection so for x is equal to 0 e i into deflection is 0 will be equal to minus p b p b into 0 cube divided by 6 a plus p into a plus b over 6 a into 0 minus a whole q plus c1 into 0 plus c2 okay so this will give us 0 plus now this term inside the macaulay bracket will be minus a so anything inside the macaulay bracket which is negative will be considered as 0 so this whole term will be equal to 0 so 0 plus c1 into 0 is 0 plus c2 and that is also equal to 0. So from here you can say that c2 is equal to 0. Now second boundary condition is that at x is equal to a we have deflection is equal to 0. So let me show it to you. So here x is equal to a you can see x start from here and at this point x is equal to a so here there is a bearing so we have deflection will be zero so we will put it in equation to put it in equation two we will get this term e i into v v zero so this term will be zero so zero is equal to minus p b into x is a so p b a cube over 
सिक्स ए प्लस दिस इज x माइनस ए सो एक्स इज ए सो दिस टर्म विल बी ऑल्सो जीरो ओके सो दिस होल टर्म विल बी जीरो बिकॉज एक्स माइन एक्स इज ए ए माइनस ए इज जीरो सो दिस होल टर्म विल बी जीरो सो जीरो प्लस सी वन इंटू एक्स वन सो सी वन इंटू एक्स इज ए सो सी वन इंटू ए प्लस सी टू इज अगेन जीरो सो फ्रॉम हेयर यू विल गेट सी वन विल बी इक्वल टू प्लस पी बी ए क्यूब ओवर सिक्स ए स्क्वेयर सो इट विल बी पी बी ए ओवर सिक्स सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ सी वन नाउ यू हैव सी वन एंड सी टू एंड वी नीड द इक्वेशन ऑफ इलास्टिक कर सो पुट put c1 and c2 in equation number 2 so we will get ei into v is equal to minus pb x cube over 6a plus p into a plus b divided by 6a into x minus a whole cube plus c1 which is pb a over 6 x plus c2 is 0 so this will be your required or required equation if you further simplify divide ei on both side so you will get v is equal to 1 over ei into minus pb x cube over 6a plus p into a plus b divided by 6a into x minus a whole cube plus p b a over 6 into x is required equation of elastic curve and that is the answer of this question but before ending this pro problem let me explain what will be the deflection we, here we said that deflection v is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 so you can put x is equal to 0 so this term will be 0 this term will be also 0 because x is equal to 0 so minus a in in micalo micale bracket will be also 0 and this x will be 0 so it means that deflection will be 0 at x is equal to Zero. Now, at x is equal to a, we have already discussed that deflection is zero. So put x is equal to a. So this will be a cube. This term will be zero because this bracket in Macaulay bracket will be zero, and this will be also a. So you can see plus p here. We will get plus p b. A square over six, and here we have P B A cube over six A. So A will cancel with this, so we will left with minus P B A square over six A, and this will cancel with this, so we will having deflection is equal to zero. So by using this equation, you can find the deflection in the beam, which will be like this. so at any point you can find the deflection with the help of this method or this equation and that was all about this problem 12-31 i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest video if you have any question you can ask me in comment section also if you are not familiar with discontinuity function or singularity function so you can just go on youtube and write down singularity function explained by adnan rashid so you will get the lecture for that again if you have any question you can ask me thank you for watching